Thanks. Great to be with you again. We ought, we ought to preface this is going to be aired on the day, uh, the morning of Super Tuesday, big day in terms of the politi political reckoning in this country. So if we allude to that, or people should realize that, but uh, we're going to talk about other matters, franchising and 2000, public access. 2008 and, uh, is a big year. It's for, all uh, one great big interesting story. For the White House and our house. Yes, <laughs> so. indeed. And welcome, welcome very much to Conversation. A pleasure to welcome the program for another uh, period of uh, discussion here with uh, Dan Coughlin, the executive director here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network, the public access facility for the borough of Manhattan. And we're going to be talking about the status of communication with particular reference to the, to the relationship between the uh, Manhattan Neighborhood Network and the cable, uh, the public access cable in their relationship with the, uh, with the franchising agreement with the cable companies and involving the mayor's office and that sort of thing, which is in a crucial phase, and other matters. But Dan, welcome once again very much to the conversation. Great to be with you again, Harold. Got a lot to talk about, and uh, I'm wondering, maybe you could, Dan, just for a minute, uh, just for a short period of time, your own background a little bit, if you would. I like to do that, because you were a long time involved in uh, Pacifica and so forth, and that's worth mentioning to get a grounding for yourself as a person and your your inclinations and so forth. Yeah, basically over uh, the last 20 years I've worked as a journalist uh, in uh, independent, non-commercial, non-profit media institutions. Uh, mm -hmm. For a number of years I worked for Interpress Service, Third mm -hmm. World News Agency, mm -hmm. worked uh, at the UN, uh, in the Caribbean, in Haiti, uh, and then uh, from there I moved on to uh, Pacifica Radio, yeah. uh, WBAI 99. When did you go there, if I may? Uh, in 1996. No, uh, could I could could I maybe interject a little bit there because Pacifica is a listener supported. Now we don't count a listener supported as a commercial thing, or do we? I mean, is it commercial free in terms of commercials from the industry? But if you're depending upon reader uh, people's support in terms of the economic viability of what you're doing, is that in a certain sense commercial or not? Is that like? Uh, PBS has a listener week, you know, the week where they get listener supporters to send in money and so forth. Right. What do you, how do you address that? And it's interesting because public access has a different means of financing, which is maybe distinctive from BAI or Pacifica. Maybe, I don't yes, know. Yes, very, very important distinction, though uh, what Pacifica started in just after World War II in mm -hmm. 1949, they mm -hmm. started a historic method by which media could be financed yeah. and that was making a direct appeal to your in that case the listening public mm -hmm. to finance uh, finance the the radio station mm -hmm. and you know nobody was selling anything mm -hmm. it was uh, your people were asking other people to give them money for something they got for free so it's pretty remarkable because what you heard on the airwaves yeah, right. was just you turn on the radio you listen to it you didn't pay anything yeah. and what the programmers were asking for is look uh, reaching out to listeners to give us uh, financing so we could be editorial independent, uh, editorially right. independent. We don't have to rely upon uh, ads. GE or AT&T for ads because once you do that, then you have to uh, uh, attune your programming to the needs of the advertisers and not the other way around. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. That's there, there, and that's the commercial. There was a time when uh, it was a Solomon Segal had part when when television was just emerging or even media when uh, it could have been other than the advertising model that's become uh, de rigueur in the commercial broadcasting and advertising is just a huge that's the cost of most of your political costs they're adding uh, buying ad time on the networks and so forth but there was a time when it didn't have to be that way there could be a subscription there are places in Europe where they have national support through tax and through the system of the state that gives uh, to BB, uh, BBC and so forth there are different models and so forth but in public access, where we are, uh, there's a different arrangement. We're going to talk about that. But the BAI means that you're, you're not having to sell a product, but you're having to sell programming, and you depend upon the people's support for the pro Now, that's got a measure of accountability and democracy built into it, in yes. a certain sense, because if people don't like what you're saying, they won't send in <laughs> and that kind of thing, and they'll support things that are perhaps radical and maybe uh, you know, kind of inclusive. But it, the, 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 relation, the, the linking of how a, a, a communication system can operate is an important question in terms of uh, the ability for people to be truly uncensored in voicing what they want to say. Mm -hmm. Particularly, I think, a lot of the things were progressive on the Pacific Network. Mr. Hill was of a progressive 
uh, mentality. Of right. It. Many of the founders uh, of Pacifica were pacifists who yeah. were put in jail in the CO in the conscientious objector right. camps right. during World War II out right. on the West Coast. Right. So uh, they felt back then that the, one of the main driving forces of war, as mm -hmm. it is today, yeah. is the misinformation that yeah. you get on the mass media mm -hmm. that tend to act as, a, uh, as, a, as an echo chamber for war. We saw that with Iraq, and this is uh, uh, what ha what the pacifists in the 40s considered a big issue for them. Mm -hmm. They wanted to create a media outlet that was not going to be a, a drum beat for war. Uh -huh. And uh, the way they decided to do that was you had to have independent financing. Yeah. Financing independent from the government, from uh, the national government, and financing independent from uh, corporations. corporations. From the government corporations. And then you could do that by having financing by the people who support what you're doing. Exactly. And that is, in a certain kind of way, a relationship that keeps the ship of state and flowing. It's, and it's a fantastic uh, model and one that continues to thrive 55 years later, 60 years later. It's one that uh, other broadcasters have, have imitated. Uh -huh. But certainly at Pacifica, it's still extraordinary for mm -hmm. any organization especially a mm -hmm. nonprofit that mm -hmm. always struggles to survive. Yeah. Pacific can go right to the air, mm -hmm. ask for support from the listeners, mm -hmm. and, every, and, and, and it works year in and year out. And that's so important because mm -hmm. it gives that editorial independence. Yeah, now here in public access, we have a different kind of situation in a sense. If I may make a distinction from that uh, in the fact that we have a, a, an expensive proposition of putting together multimedia and cable and so forth, and it came in terms of radio, came a long time ago. I can remember Jack Benny, there was no television, there was none of that. It came later in terms of the evolution of technology, the television did, and the costs were very high. And so here they've set it up, and when it came, there was a Sloan Commission report, I don't know if you remember, they said uh, cable television, it was unique itself that was emerging. And it said the medium of abundance. And then there were forces in the social political s situation that gave support to the idea that the cable companies that have franchises to bring their services into a particular market and charge for those the way the phone company would, that they can turn off if they don't pay the general public, and take some of that revenue and bring it over to something that can uh, set up a system for the people to be able to do that so that the people do not have to have cost involved in terms of that. So right. that's a different model. It's a great model, though. Very, very important model. Uh, uh, it's essentially about the use of the public land because uh -huh. the cable companies, telecommuni telecommunications companies, just like oil companies, mm -hmm. use public land or sure. the timber companies. Mm -hmm. And they have to pay rent for that land. Mm -hmm. uh, and a form that that rent for the public land takes is in part to support public access, mm -hmm. which, as you know, is it's, it's expensive, it's capital intensive, you have a lot of cameras, editing mm -hmm. equipment, uh, programming. So as part of the rent for the public land, mm -hmm. the cable companies finance public access and there's also this built in, as you point out, a very important public policy goal. Uh -huh. Free speech, First Amendment, diversity of voices, local voices, mm -hmm. localism in media, mm -hmm. so important in the United States. Right now particularly. Especially right now, to get local voices, diverse voices, while there's increasing consolidation at the national and the international level, mm -hmm. Rupert Murdoch, we mm -hmm. see what the FCC recently did, mm -hmm. uh, you can now own radio and newspaper yeah. uh, in three the same two. market, three to two. Mm. You, as you get fewer and fewer opinions, mm -hmm. fewer and fewer diversity, less mm -hmm. and less information, mm -hmm. more and more infotainment, mm -hmm. uh, that means that local neighborhoods lose, local people lose, local communities lose, local voices lose, mm -hmm. what's happening at the neighborhood level. Mm -hmm. And that's what public access is so much about. Mm -hmm. It's about providing a platform for community voices and local voices, non-commercial, and uh, that's what's so great about public access. And plus, it has this financing mechanism built in, which is so important to public access's success. Mm -hmm. They had, uh, the British tipped their hat to the idea of freedom of speech. If you're looking historically by setting up at a uh, corner of Hyde Park, a little part of the corner of Hyde Park, and anybody could go with the soapbox and stand up and talk. And, you, and it, that's the tip of the hat to freedom of speech, uh, where divergent and unpopular, un, 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 un perhaps, views so forth could be voiced. 
That's an important idea. Very important, but you always have to struggle for that. Mm -hmm. As you know, you know the, the police will set you up in the pen and then say, okay, well, you can speak here, you can protest here, but we'll put the pen a mile away from the White House or, or a mile you, away. You know, but, so, or we won't let you go to Central Park. Or we won't let you go to Central Park. You're going to trample right. the grass, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah, right. So you uh -huh. always have to fight for it. And mm -hmm. the same thing with public access. Mm -hmm. Constantly pushed, marginalized, oh, no, go here, go there. You know, we'll give you channel uh, 56 instead of channel 14. Mm -hmm. Always constantly uh, yeah, well, the, a marginalization of public access and of free speech. So every year yeah. that this a franchise comes around, every time that this is negotiated, we have to get out there. We have to put our point of view across. We have to defend the right to free speech. Yeah, it, it, that's operative in the media in general that there is a, uh, you know, uh, uh, it's like a, a popularity thing. Or in, in the operation of society, Tiger Woods is really good at golf. And uh, there are people that are the stars and the ratings and the Arbitron and the so forth, the ad agencies are selling eyeballs to watch a particular piece of programming. And uh, while most of the attention goes to the ad makers that can make those creative ads, the programming is of some significance in terms of attracting people. So that's a competition that takes place within a marketplace thing. Now, if you have a thing where you don't have anything uh, of a marketplace discipline for what people want to do, that is possible within public access. There could be programming that only three or four people want to see. And then there's also a question of how much capability is there for a diversity of views to be uh, presented within the uh, telecosm, as it were, right. in a certain sense. So that's a question. And that that's expanding all the time. There's more and more capability, right. and that's a context within which things are allowed. So that finally we can get down to with all the hot shots and the people that put together professional programming that can attract people and all the Academy Award systems and the ways of recognizing that and all the hype and so forth around that, they put that up. You got about 200, 300 channels on your cable system now and there should be some room for the people. It's called democracy and the people do have something to say about this whereas the pros would probably think who cares about the people, all they are sheep to buy products that will sell them. Do you understand? Yes, absolutely. And That's it's good to have the people's word or the people's uh, communication, that's something hard for people to get into their mind that the people have interesting stories to tell. Well, Some you, of the best, really. Yeah. You brought yeah. up the analogy of Central Park. Yeah. You know, it's a public park in a city. Mm -hmm. It provides a really an important <laughs> function. And it's just like public access is a central park of the airways. Yes, right. You okay, know, good, it, is yeah. a, it is an oasis mm -hmm. of so many different uh, points of views, perspective. Uh, uh, of local voices too. That's mm -hmm. so important yeah. to remember because, Good uh, and, and, and it's a life and, and death issue even. I mean, we remember uh, several years ago in Minot, North Dakota, when yeah. an ammonia mm -hmm. train derailed on a cold winter day, mm -hmm. uh, the police went knocking on the door of the local radio stations to uh, let the stations know to alert the townspeople to the ammonia leak. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the police were knocking, nobody was answering on the doors. Yeah, it was the awful. stations had been bought by Clear Channel, who were not programming them from Minot, North Dakota, but uh, North Dakota, but down in San Diego. It was nothing but and, a profit center. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, those, it, it is a life and death situation yeah. uh, to have locally owned, locally controlled media that can uh, be responsive to community needs. Another important point, uh, mm -hmm. the Media Access Project, mm -hmm. a group, uh, uh, nonprofit research group on media, did a study of, of election coverage mm -hmm. in Portland, Chicago, and Minneapolis in the run-up to an election to find mm -hmm. out what percentage of local news was devoted to local elections. Mm -hmm. They found that less than 1% of local news coverage was dedicated to the local two elections, and all of that was for congressional figures. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for city council, mm -hmm. the state, uh, the state house, your local mayor. Mm -hmm. All that level of municipal democracy, yeah. of local democracy, of regional democracy, is not covered. Would they would they claim uh, market demand for that? That people do not want to hear the people droning on about something if it isn't got a car chase or a rape or a murder or something that happened. A lot of local news is. Uh, 
Yeah, if, it, ble if it bleeds, it violence. bleeds, right. And, by, yeah. and, you know, if it bleeds, it, it yeah, bleeds, yeah, right. you know, that kind of notion in terms of local broadcasting decisions. And that again, they would probably be having their eye on the bottom line of uh, selling advertising. Harold, that may be true, yeah. but if that is true, then, then that's a bigger... Is in that's, a, that's right, but yeah, right. that's a bigger argument for uh, having a set-aside, having the central park Absolutely. of the airways, having an area for public access. So, mm -hmm. the, uh, yes, the issue is, is really critical it's, it's really about our, our cities, our municipalities, our life, our neighborhoods, our communities. Our people. And, yeah, and our children. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, well, so, well, who cares about them when yeah. you've got a... When you so gotta, it's, it, uh, is, it is critically important. And yeah. I think for New York City, mm. uh, just in the next uh, few days here mm. on Thursday, yeah. February 7th. February 7th. Uh, that will be two days from the day this airs. That's right. And one and all, citizens all, and well as the people who are involved in public access, are encouraged to perhaps consider following what you're saying now and participate in this thing because it affects the nature of our of our whole community right. and tell us what it is. Well the city of New York is holding a public hearing on cable services in Manhattan. Very important subject to the people of New York City. Very important. So uh -huh. folks should come on down, mm -hmm. talk about your cable service. It could be just as easily as your cable bill or your customer service or uh, about how uh, important public access is to you, to your group, your community organization, to your neighborhood, or just come on down to the borough of Manhattan Community College, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, at the Richard Harris Theater, and just come on down and take a look and support public access, Let's support local media. Let's locate that pretty well. That's at the Manhattan Community College on Chamber Street with the river. Yeah, downtown, it, right downtown by uh, 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 Greenwich and, and, uh, yeah. and West Street. The one, two, three subway stops, E and C, Chambers, or you can a take train the number 20 bus. The 20 bus will take you right to the door. Three to seven, they're going to ask citizens' comments on the... It's being run by the Do It Office of the Mayor, Office of the Mayor. Is that correct? Yeah, it's a very big uh, agency. A lot of people haven't heard it, but it's mm. a Department of Information Technology. Important and department in this information very age, I would yeah, say. Very yeah. important. And we have similar things all around the country. I mean, of the Do It. I mean, let me hold that for a second. But then maybe it would be. And absolutely, people are in, all citizens are considered to come down and have their say. Absolutely, anybody Try and can keep speak. it brief. If, well, away, they're going to be so many people. They're going to restrict you to three minutes. Three minutes. So get your haiku books out and, and get uh, it all. Type it up. Type, type it up, up and get your enunciation all in order. You could practice before the mirror and come in there, all that kind of thing, in your moment of television. Because it's going to be televised, I understand. We're going to broadcast it live on MNN. Uh huh. 3 and we we'll record it and have it for posterity and can do it again because we have an interest in that. I wonder, and that's important. We'll come back to that. We got to demonstrate. We got a little PowerPoint thing you're going to show in a little while, yep. and everything. But maybe you could help spell it out in the generic thing. Is that apparently this is the one for Manhattan? We have one in Queens. We have in Brooklyn, and there are about three thousand of, if I'm correct, uh, of these public access centers that bring multimedia capacity to produce without any money necessarily being involved in the process. That's it's right. Free thought. That's interesting and yeah. very unique and important. Uh, and maybe you could just spell that out briefly. And then we want to get to the PowerPoint projection with the uh, dimensions of this franchise, agree uh, this franchise reality that's coming up day after this, two days after this program here. Well, MNN is part of a, a national movement, a okay. national grassroots movement to to have public access to communications technologies. So all around the country, there's 3,000 community media centers that do this kind of public programming. Mm -hmm. And just like Central Park, you don't charge an entry to people to come into Central Park. The people well, would not, like to. People <laughs> would like to. They'd like to set up to, a toll road. I'd like that, would. I'd like that contract, but you know, we, or some people would we say. We think it's important that yeah. you're not discriminated against on the basis of money. Yeah. And uh, that all people, this is a media commons. Could you say that again? that uh, people are not discriminated against on the basis of money. Probably people feel they are often discriminated on the basis of money in the way our society is organized. Uh, all the time. So I would, <laughs> I would, say, say, I would feel say that generic. way every they, day. They think it's built into the nature <laughs> of the universe, you know, that kind of yeah, thing. But right. this is really unique. And again, to underspell, yeah. the reason that this is here is because cable television came, even after broadcast television, so it came at a time where the technology was offering capability that the, that the previous uh, zeitgeist or the previous condition simply had not made possible. Mm -hmm. And we want to keep an eye on the future also yeah. because the revolutions are still coming out of the computer yeah. labs and we're heading for 
abundance. We're going to want to talk about bandwidth and the capability. How many channels can we have? Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a, a feed over into the cell phone universe mm -hmm. on a world scale? We have the n internet coming. We're connecting in with a lot of issues on that front yeah. looking ahead. And uh, so that's part of, of that. But these 3,000, are those as well set up as this one is? This is a very fine, up-to-date studio facility. works very well. There are questions of how those are run around the country. Are some of those rather small and that kind of thing? Or yeah. What is the reality, maybe? A lot of them are very small. We're um, here at Manhattan. Uh, I think we're, uh, uh, without uh, appearing uh, too... Uh, a bold. Uh, we are the largest public access center in the country. We employ We're the largest market in the country. And the, lo and the most lucrative uh -huh. uh, market That's uh, for the cable companies. Oh, okay. Uh, for the and, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good. And, uh, yeah. But no, M Manhattan is a very big uh, public access center. We have about uh, 48 employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we are, we're just expanding tremendously because yes. the need is really great here. We mm -hmm. just are, are going to get a new facility uptown, a satellite facility to yeah. better serve upper up uh, folks in Upper Manhattan. Over 104th Street. And on the east side of Manhattan. Right, yeah. Uh, so uh, we're a, a very big <laughs> and important center. We produce about uh, 560 hours of programming a week we air. It's huge. That's a lot uh, of programming. And most of that I is think, original programming. Yeah, there's original. I think there's more produced in the uh, public access realm than in the networks combined. By far. By far. Is that a fact? Now, that's yeah. a fact that's worth By underscoring, far. perhaps. Yeah. There's a lot are, are of shaking going on among the people of this country making programming. It's unbelievable. Uh -huh. and, uh, the, by far and away, the amount of original programming coming out of MNN far surpasses anything produced out of Well, I was thinking of the, of the whole network, uh, the whole national output of public access is... Uh, they're putting a whole lot of uh, a whole lot of shaking going on. These are serious shaking, uh, and, and they're 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 not yet as well interconnected as perhaps they are going to become as a, a force. They ought to join up. They, we have the alliance of community media in Washington trying to assert the interests of the people. Yes, in a sense, it's an intermediate agency that allows the situation that's emerged. This process of franchising, which has been won through the political policy discussions and so forth, is an important uh, factor in terms of a democratic society and communication that is in keeping with the best of what is possible uh, to us as the technology uh, advances. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah. it's important for the citizenry, even if they're not involved here, to support, I would suggest, this idea that there be a democratic orientation yeah. to communication. And, and I think you see that. Uh, mm -hmm. People are uh, free speech, First Amendment, uh, diversity of views, mm -hmm. local media, very important traditionally, mm -hmm. uh, you know, an American value, you know, mm -hmm. a value of, I think, of people throughout the country who really care about that being preserved and protected and strengthened in the mm -hmm. years ahead. And that's why you see public access growing all around the country, yeah. why this movement exists, 3,000 public access centers, uh, very uh, active, some more than others, yes, uh -huh. but essentially a growing movement. And I think you're also seeing many more public access centers getting together, mm -hmm. uh, getting with together others. with others yeah. uh, to protect their interests mm -hmm. against, uh, obviously, the media giants yes. and those who don't want, who want to make a profit off of everything. Uh, yeah, well, they're, uh, they're, that, that's the market demand. Is right. a lot of that's why there's been a lot of attention given to that by the people, and they got all kinds of channels they'd like to use, and the people would make money at it, that kind of thing, and everything. Now here you got a thing where you got the people. Who cares what the people think? It's got to be some sort of a, a winning kind of a new game show or something that will attract people for mm -hmm. you know that model. That's there, or even in public broadcasting, they have to go and make their pitches all the time to get yeah, support and I for can them. Just, if there's a slide that uh, we might be okay, able to yeah, see, you, I can show you. Yeah, uh, but maybe we could set it something. up. You have a, a, a kind of like a. This is a good time to do it. We have a, a, a PowerPoint, and let's see if George, maybe in the booth, maybe you could bring up the first slide on the PowerPoint. Yeah, there, there we, we go. Are. Here you could talk to this and. Yeah. So this is a picture, a snapshot of New York City, where you see uh, the borough populations and the cable subscribers and then the size of each of the access centers. And we're just looking at three, well, you see the five boroughs. The, the most populous borough, of course, is Brooklyn, 2.5 million people. Okay. We here in Manhattan are about 1.6 million. But in Manhattan, as we were talking about, you have the, the highest number of cable subscribers, about 600,000 in uh, Manhattan. That's cable a lot of folks. Yeah, yeah a lot uh -huh. of folks. Mm -hmm. uh, and as I was saying, our little access centers in Manhattan, we have about <coughs> 48 staff here. Uh, uh, at Manhattan and Brooklyn, you have about 44 staff, and in oh. the Bronx, 
you have about uh, 33 staff. Uh -huh. um, and that just gives you a little snapshot of, of our access centers. And maybe just if we go to the next slide. Okay, go ahead. You... Uh, I could show you uh, on the next slide. I talked a little bit about what we're doing here in Manhattan. We're really looking forward to expanding our services. And we just recently uh, got a new satellite facility, which we're going to renovate an old firehouse on the east in, in El Barrio, East Harlem. Mm -hmm. Very excited about that. It's a, it was built in 1884. We're going to landmark the building and preserve it Wonderful. and turn it into a community media center. We're going to have two express studios, a, a editing facilities, a, a youth media center. So we're very excited about that. And this, again, to underscore, keep this slide up. This is going to underscore the fact this is going to make media, multimedia production with equipment that's very similar, if not in the league with what the fellows at the networks use, available to the people in that barrio or in the city and the cost will be zero to that's them. That's right. That's now that's right. something to really underscore how what a democratic and a learning capability and an expression capability for the people that that affords. Yeah. That's really important. Very important because yeah. you know I was just down at a new Apple store down uh, on uh, West 14th Street the other mm -hmm. day and I noticed a lot of the young uh, kids from uh, from the neighborhood were in the store uh -huh. surfing and using yeah. the stuff, <laughs> using mm -hmm. the equipment. Yeah. Very interesting and Apple lets them. Mm -hmm. But it was clear that th there's a tremendous need mm -hmm. by young people, by people of all ages yeah. in New York City, right. for access to new media technologies. Mm -hmm. People want to be able to communicate. They mm -hmm. want to be able to express themselves. Mm -hmm. It's so important to have that skill set for to get employment now. You mm -hmm. have to know how to use, uh, mm -hmm. you know, PowerPoint, Microsoft Word, et cetera. You have to know all these skills mm -hmm. to get a job. Mm -hmm. So it's important that we give access to media to the communities here in Manhattan yeah. for all kinds of reasons. And that they do, and if you have to learn, they'll teach you, they give you the instructions. And so on. I wonder if we could just go along one, or let's go through this PowerPoint yeah. thing. You want to, you, this is and just to show you what we do, if uh, the next yeah. slide could come up uh, here uh, at, at all our access centers, one of the things we do is uh, folks can book studios. Mm -hmm. And these are just a series of charts <laughs> I'm just going to show you briefly of how many people are using our studios? Okay, this Bronx is the annual Net. from left to right. Yeah, right? so okay. you see 2002, 2003, 2004, and 2006, 2007, the uses of our studios. Uh, uh, is this the, all of the studios in New York or in Manhattan? No, Manhattan, Brooklyn, and the Bronx. Okay, okay. And you can see a lot more people are using our facilities over the last six years. Word's getting around that it's a good thing. Word is getting around. I think the new media digital, new, uh, the new digital media revolution is, uh -huh. is creating much more of an interest in the kind of services we offer. Right. And so you're getting more and more people using our studios. Yeah, that's right. And, and the people haven't been able to be involved in television over the longer haul, so they get used to that idea they think is going to it's a one-way passive kind of experience this is making it an active experience which is a different kind and of people mindset come here get to take their video throw it up on the web i think mm. you do that harold a lot of people do that yeah the youtube's you know, so growing great really right. fast really fast maybe yeah. we'll go to the next slide real quick i'll just go through these slides um Again, you'll see you take a look at our editing hours, the number of people who've been here using it, the editing facilities. Again, it's like a public library, a public park. Folks come in, use the, the editing system. Underscore these editing systems. There's a democratization going on coming out of the computer labs and development, and they're using a system that is very similar to, it's called nonlinear editing, very similar to what the hot shots or the hottest creative talent at the ad agencies or the networks are That's using right. to make it. So the people can start making media That's rather right. than just taking what is spoon fed very them important. by the pros. And they're becoming really very good at it. We're getting some really good editing things going. And, it's those gonna, kids, and it's going to get better and better. It is. That's a sign. That's yeah. something important. It's going to get better and better because these developments are coming out of the computer labs. And, it's and um, we're going to want to talk about bandwidth, and there can be expansion. Mm -hmm. we got four channels here in New York and Manhattan, right? Yes. We could have more. We could have more, and we and, want to get more. And it's important because anybody can come here. We could say, what happens at an access center like this? If you have the we got how many? 20, four channels, 23 hours a day, 22 hours a day. What happens if there's enough people knocking on the door that you do not have time for, or there's more... Uh, demand for coming and taking part in this thing, then there is capability of handling. How is that handled by the access centers around the, uh, where you, do you have to turn people away if there are too many, or how do the cable people, access cable entities or facilities handle that issue? 
you uh, you generally yeah you have to turn people away and even here just to book this studio the main studio at M and N uh, even if I want to book this main studio at M and N as executive director in the evening at a seven or eight o'clock at night I have to book two months in advance uh -huh. you know that's the kind of demand you're talking about uh -huh. for the facilities here uh, at M and N okay. and around the country but eventually you know you just have to say no because you got too many people you got limited bandwidth I've been going but, over if I may the beginning because the cable started around 1970 the groundwork was being laid for public access and there was a man Cindy Dean who was doing that George Stoney who's mm -hmm. on the board here well uh, a stalwart a pioneer and so forth and they used to have it in terms of the policy decisions that uh, they would have as much capacity uh, that it would be over uh, the the capacity would be greater than in a reasonable frame with the demand and if it became more than that it would be first come first serve yeah are those principles operative in terms of how decisions are made yes. in there and do they vary con uh, it's community to community the community a may have too many people community b may not have enough yeah there's some places where not enough people are taking advantage of it and that kind of thing mm -hmm. how do we handle that at a national level the, di the the varying demand and then the capability and then one sort of tack onto it are there not coming the capability where uh, we will be able to have more and more capability as the technology brings more and more uh, capability from the computer labs that we could have? We got four channels, we could have 12. Well, the problem is that uh, ultimately the problem is there's a huge need, community need. For bandwidth. For, for channels, for bandwidth. I mean, you know, every... You could have a, a labor channel, a trade union channel, a human rights channel. Uh, New York City, for instance, is the worldwide center of the human rights movement. New York City is the worldwide center of NGOs. I think the dogs New should York have a New York City channel. has a huge you know, labor movement, right. historic labor movement. Yeah. These are, are community sectors of the communities that right. ought to have a, a means of expression. Yeah, well, I, the, yeah. the issue, though, is is you got to be able to put the flashlights in the battery, right? Mm -hmm. You can have that capacity. We can have the bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Bandwidth, I'm not so sure, is because of technological changes, you can access that bandwidth or mm -hmm. make a claim for that, a public interest claim. Yeah, well, that's the issue is going to yeah. be the money, mm -hmm. you know, how much money it's going to cost to do that. Mm -hmm. and, and what uh, the economics of that are going to be. Right, and, and especially from a public... Uh, a a community and public access perspective because it still is is costly mm -hmm. uh, and uh, and so these are the issues that uh, that end up being in negotiation with the cable companies in the city of New York mm -hmm. to what degree is the public interest going to be represented in the, in the telecommunications and landscape this facility represents a public interest and in a certain sense it's intermediary between the uh, the, the public itself because you have people here, we have a self-selection. Right. People are here working in it, the people come in to produce, you all are here, they got the staff and all that kind of stuff yeah. are here. And so that's an intermediate area, but you're in a very real sense trying best you can to represent the public right. in terms of the, of the polity. Yes. And that's a very important function. Yes. There are other uh, entities like that, and it's growing, and so you could take that over into politics and that kind of thing. But it's, it's, it's developing. Now you have an entity that should be, seems to be there's a great deal of support for the idea of public access as an, at an institutional yeah, level. Yeah, and if we could go back to those slides, yeah, I just want to show you one, slides, one other thing real quick. Um, and if you just go through that slide one more time to the next one. And the point of this, of this slide right here and the next slide is just to show how much uh, public access has grown. Manhattan and Brooklyn Again, our usage uh, is up at all the, the access centers, mm -hmm. education statistics here. Mm -hmm. And maybe we go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. And again, you see uh, our field equipment uh, checkouts, so people checking out our camera packages. Right, over the remote, weekend. they can go out. Right. And again, underscore, this is uh, equipment that's very similar to what the networks use, and the, uh, qu the quality of yes. the equipment is democratizing all the time. A lot of the uh, Because good, of the advance of technology. Good equipment. And uh, go to the next slide. But I just want to show you uh, here, and just hit uh, once on that, and you can see uh, what kind of funding we get just tap the space bar there. Yeah, and this is uh, M&N's funding over, if you look at 2001 is zero. And That's over to the left. Yeah, yeah and up uh -huh. to 2007 on mm -hmm. the right last year, our funding increased about 7% over right. that seven-year period. And hit the bar again. Uh -huh. 
And uh, there you can see uh, how BronxNet, uh, BCAT has done, our, our, our colleagues in, in Brooklyn, they've gone up about 12%. And this is funding that's coming through the franchise agreement that had been made uh, 10, 10 years, years ago, ago in yeah. terms of New York City. Okay. And BronxNet? And one more hit on that uh, hit, chart. Okay. And there you see uh, BronxNet up about 17%. 17. Okay. But that might look like a lot, but please hit the space bar one more time, and you'll see. But that is the cost of living that we're dealing with. Okay, so, so our it's not increases, even kept up with inflation. Our increases have not kept up with inflation. So okay. what is happening, Harold, is what, uh, what we talked about before. You're being slowly marginalized. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Right? Your funding is not quite keeping up with the cost of living. Uh -huh. uh, you, the, the, the proverbial uh, police pen, you're not being let into Central Park on free speech. You're being moved to the corner. Uh -huh. So this is kind of what's happening to public access. And go to the next uh, slide, please. Well, you, ha you could have a cost of living thing built into the contract, one would think. Well, but, I, think yeah. we w I think we might just do that well, next time. Well, we didn't negotiate that uh, last time. But, it was uh, 10 years ago that was negotiated. 10 years ago, yeah. and that was a different period. But if mm -hmm. you hit the space bar one time, and there you see the cost of living, and hit the space bar one more time. And, but this is the revenue of the cable companies. Okay, leave that one up for a while because yeah. that's very interesting, isn't yeah. it? That's very interesting because the cable franchises are very, very very, one more time, very lucrative yes. for the cable entities to do it. In the case of Manhattan, it's Time Warner. Yes. And I guess then it's RCN. Yes. And I don't know, Verizon's coming onto the picture. Verizon's we coming want to into the market, that. yeah. So that th those uh, people who pay their cable bills will realize that, um, you know, because you've got telephone now, you've got, you've got uh, streaming yeah. to the uh, But this internet. money, does, this only is this from, is this doesn't include telephone or, or internet, DSL. This is, just the, this this is, is just their revenues from video. Th but that's a very steep curve that I very see. Steep and that they're making a great deal of money from the franchise for this, the largest market in the city. The Time Warner and the RCN people are doing very, very well, and this is all a matter of the public record. Yes, this is a matter of the public record. This is public figures that I'm using. Now, well, how is it set up, and what is the relationship to that cable company uh, that is in the public wheel and through the contractual development of the law and so forth responsible to have a franchise agreement with uh, many public services, one of which is public access? How does that relate to... Um, the, the reality. How do we relate to that reality? We're setting a template for, uh, in September, as I understand, yeah. uh, that will set a template for about 10 years out. Yes. So that's a very important public policy issue. And how is this worked out? And maybe you could spell out some of the details of that. Well, the city undergoes a process of, of hearings. Mm -hmm. And we at MNN uh, uh, undergo what we call a community needs assessment. Mm -hmm. We had 15 uh, 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 groups met mm -hmm. uh, just last year around the whole borough mm -hmm. uh, representing different organizations, different producers, uh, different neighborhoods to talk to everybody about what their needs are in their neighborhoods. Communication uh, needs. Communication right. needs, yes, around the media. We, held a, we had a telephone survey of 400 people in Manhattan, mm -hmm. a scientific sample to, to ask folks what did they want to see more of. And, uh, and so we're using that community needs assessment, an independent uh, analysis of Manhattan's communication needs and interests, and taking that back to the city and the cable companies and saying, look, folks are interested in more youth programming or folks want to see much more on local issues like housing and education and health care. Mm. Uh, folks want to see more uh, access to uh, uh, the, the community boards and our local elected officials and our uh, borough president and et cetera. So these are some of the issues that folks have brought up uh, and there's a whole range of them. One key issue that came up, they, folks want more uh, to learn more about m &N. So there's more promotion support and and help to producers and neighborhoods to get their message out. Mm -hmm. So these are different areas that, that come up in the community needs assessment, and we present that to the city. Did you ever, did you, oh, okay, you present that as, as part of the yeah, negotiating yes, stance. Yes, And this is negotiated through the mayor's office to do it, as the negotiating. Yes. But we have an opportunity to talk or be in touch with them. They're involved with this hearing. So yes, they're trying to right. get a sense of what the public once it's again a it's a it's a, a liaison with the public that you're talking to public officials that's about right. and so that's and also then to the corporation and the corporate exactly. world 
Uh, you don't have in that thing uh, uh, citizens' needs. Do you also have citizens' reasonable wants? <laughs> so that you see, Mar Marx they, used to they, say They don't say wants, it's no, uh, reasonable I mean, needs. Yes, well, I mean, but it. it might be willing for us to be able to start talking about reasonable wants. Yeah. Why shouldn't we be able mm -hmm. to do that? We should be able to do that in the marketplace because there are a lot of people... Dickens had Mr. What's his name? Uh, you know, say, are there no workhouses? I mean, if you could, if people would set the need at so low, all you need is a little gruel to survive. Right. If people right. can take that attitude toward the needs of the people, particularly if they're trying to get a better market share for themselves. But reasonable wants is reasonable to assume as you get into a society that's having more and more capability, you can have more and more. So we can begin wow. to think in an abundant mode, yes, possibly. we should be thinking More than way. being constrained by these. I, uh, I and agree. That's a larger metaphor for the whole society. But I would even say that world the world society. I, yes, and I don't think that our reasonable wants are not our community needs. I think our community needs need to be are reasonable uh, and ought to be uh, 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 expansive and uh, ought to meet uh, uh, some real serious issues that we face in our neighborhoods and in our communities. I couldn't agree with you and, more. And uh, I don't think. Uh, and I, and I think we are living in an abundance, well, as we've seen from, uh -huh. it's like an oil gusher of wealth for the cable companies that have mm. come out of Manhattan through using the public land. Yeah. They take that funds, those funds, and they, you know, invest it in, in, uh, the in yachts, in, in, there are a lot of yachts yes, that are afloat, and they need new yeah. brass. We or, take our know, our yeah. little pittances that we get from the cable companies, <laughs> and we invest it in East Harlem, uh -huh, right? We uh -huh. put a 20-year-old building that's uh -huh. been derelict for 20 years, Make it we put it back online, turn it into a community media yeah, center. Yeah. That's a brilliant, you know, uh, 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 that's an economic strategy to, to reinvigorate our neighborhoods, <laughs> reinvigorate our communities, give young people access to the skills and uh, and, and technologies that they need in the future. Yeah. Uh, this is a real sh pro uh, humanity vision that we oh. have, and I, I couldn't agree more. I think it's reasonable, it's necessary, and it needs to happen uh, immediately. Uh, and it's also immediate, and now. We yeah, want, now. We want reasonable yeah, wants yes, now. Yeah, yeah, they, because they're the barricades. Right. Yeah, because, right. you know, yeah, but that's a metaphor, if I may, for the larger human condition, because we have a big... Uh, we have tremendous capabilities as a human society through the technological capabilities uh, that we have not had historically. James Joyce said history is a nightmare from which I'm attempting to awaken. Mm. I would not want to live in an era when there was no anesthetic, mm. that you're going to have your leg cut off and you have a bullet to bite on mm -hmm. or something out of history. So the future, if you have a positive view of the future, it is that we're becoming more and more, we have a capability that our inherited institutions were set up within a context of scarcity out of all of human history and we're coming into a new era and we've got to be thinking ahead. For one thing, even in access, we're thinking ahead 10 years. You're setting a template 10 right. years. Think of the changes because right. the exponential increasing capability of computing and information processing is going to be going almost L-shaped. There's going to be an exponential increasing. It's, it's coming out of the labs and everything. So we can be continuing to think, I think maybe we'll be able to even get a little bit beyond reasonable needs. We might be able to get out into outlandish <laughs> needs. And well, we can begin to have people think about there's a capability that we can tap, unutilized capability because we're out of sync with look, what, what the what, system by which Harold, it can be realized. Let, let me say this. It's a big what, what political we, what, issue what on the world What our reasonable planet. needs are, we just want to be on the same playing field mm -hmm. as the telecommunications companies. That's all we're asking for. Mm -hmm. We see mm. a Time Warner Center at 59th Street, Columbus Circle. There's bigger you know, building a than glass, uh, That's right. I've that's a bigger, a bigger building. building. <laughs> and I just want to say, we, we just, we're not asking for much. We just want to be treated the same. Uh -huh, Equality. Yeah. And I think there's a quality of that what you're saying is representative. It's, it's a metaphor, in a sense, for the world. Yes. Because you had a I world mean, where all the assets are owned by a small group and everything, and they've got a system, and we're looking for some sort of a new thing. And if you got... If, if we need new ideas other than those that the uh, hoary ideas we've been holding on to and organizing things, uh, it's, it's very inappropriately organized because we have a few plutocrats who run most political right. systems all around the world. Uh, and we have systems that where we have such destructive capability that we could destroy the species. That's something new. 
since about 1970. There's something new blowing in the wind, and on the, the positive side is something really almost outlandishly ability to transcend scarcity at an ontologic level that is characteristic of the technological extension of our consciousness. And if those new ideas are going to be part of a human condition that could put up an alternative to the destructive one, it's one, it's probably going to be coming out of places like you, uh, public access or from the people more than it's been coming out of the people who are comfortably yeah. ensconced within those mm -hmm. castle this keeps. Is, that's right. This those is corporate where the, castle that's keeps. Right. This is in public access in the commons mm -hmm. is where the future is developed, is discussed, is nurtured, and is let, let go. And yeah. I think the media commons uh, has to grow, has to develop, but it also, you know, it needs that nurturing water. It needs that sustainability. Mm -hmm. And I think the private telecommuni telecommunications company have developed their wealth off the public land. Or the and, whole corporate system or the whole And all we're saying is, you know, let's be fair. Mm -hmm. Let's be reasonable. Uh, you know, our center here, we shouldn't have to be worrying every other day about leaky roofs. And, mm -hmm. you know, the HVAC system mm -hmm. uh, is, is creaky. And can we replace it? Yeah. Uh, but it's so expensive to replace it, you can't, you know. Mm -hmm. Those should not be that day-to-day, -day, like you're saying, survival issues that we face here in public access. That shouldn't be a problem for us. We Nor should be should liberated from that to focus on the kind of amazing creativity that so many thousands of people are engaged and in. And so, so should the people of the world be in that condition. I mean, I don't want to necessarily... Yeah, it's a metaphor. But this, 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 this public access thing is now expanding through the Internet. We're, we're connecting with the Internet. The programs here are streamed dependably to the whole wide world. I understand they've got groups of penguins watching our programming down <laughs> in Antarctica. <laughs> well, we're trying to jump from iceberg to iceberg. But it's everywhere, which is an extremely important development that's occurred. We couldn't have thought about that 10 years ago and or something. And we've got to make sure that the new media systems that are being built today mm. have that central park built into them. All right, because yeah, right. right now, what is being reproduced is a system of commerce, of commercialism, yeah. of infotainment mm -hmm. that is not addressing the critical issues that we face today. The critical uh, as needs societies, as neighborhoods, as people, yeah. uh, it is you know completely uh, uh, being ignored. And so we got to make sure that the internet and the multimedia world, the new media systems, which right. is all being driven by commerce uh -huh. and commercialism. Yeah at some level, uh -huh. is represented for the public interest and the public good and local communities and growth and development. Right. And yeah, there ought to be a thing like that for the, for the people, and it, it should be, and I, I think there's a metaphor with the whole human condition mm. on that, and there'll be places, and communication is really important. The idea is, it seems like, it seems to me like PR, and it seems like all of the political thing, it's all narratives that are all spun by people who have a certain interest and an understanding of the world. And there ought to be a place for a lot of the people who have a... Mr. Kucinich used to have the idea we should have a department of peace mm. or something, or alternative thinking is really important, and you're likely to get alternative thinking. Lord Acton said power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely. Mm. And people who get ensconced within a system don't see any need for any other things to be said because they've got a sense of truth. That's very dangerous. But from the people, there's a thing stirring in the wind that is from the people, and it seems to me the public access and the ability for the people to have a say is an extremely important and now becoming possible for us to hear from the people in a way that historically hasn't been practicable. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it is becoming so now. And we got to unutilized capability there that the future is allowing and we want to think anticipatorily about the possibilities of the future and have a system that's going to allow us to get to where it can maybe be open take our grandchildren or something to everybody in a liberated way that might be the promise of the whole human experience in a unique revolutionary in the best sense of the word involving everybody synergistic mm -hmm. uh, reality that has been maybe what human purpose has been about in terms of relating to the universe and the rest of the ecology. Mm -hmm. Perhaps we live in a time of qualitative transformation, do you think? I think so. I mean, I, I do. I, I see, think it's privileged happening. to be I alive. Think we're, it's exciting. Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, the world can change uh, on a heartbeat, and mm -hmm. we've seen that so many times in recent years, whether 
uh, the collapse of the Soviet Union. You know, I remember weeks before the collapse, they were being painted as, you know, the evil empire with, and, and then two seconds later, they, poof, paper tiger, you know, And gone. it was completely missed uh, by all of our intelligence, so-called intelligence right, yeah. agency. We're all caught unaware of yeah, that. They gone. seem to be. Two seconds. So you don't have a tremendous amount of faith in the people who are running some of those systems are trying to well, give they us intelligence. Well, they could be gone, they could be gone in yeah. two seconds. Maybe well, that's why they didn't want well, to, they, well, you know, they yeah. could go poof too. Uh -huh. I mean, it's not, it's yeah. not as if this, uh, the edifice that we have today yeah. is something that's inevitable at all. Not at all. It's very touch and go, but it's mm. exciting and everything yeah. like that. And it is new in a way. And, and, public, and, t and it's all, at a certain level, it's all a matter of uh, scenarios and of communication. And now we're getting back not only to uh, alphanumeric communication we've had for a few hundred years, we're getting back to multimedia, multisensorial capability mm -hmm. that's coming. We're probably going to end up with holography. And these things that are coming out of the, the labs is very promising, but we uh, also we ought to keep in the back of our minds somewhere the idea, what is different about now that makes possible things that have not been possible in a historical context? If you're sitting around the table, you've got one hot dog and you've got 20 people is one thing. If you've got 20 hot dogs and three people, that's different. That there's enough, there's enough for everybody. We can have an expansion of the capability for everyone to be able to communicate. Do you see this thing uh, transmogrifying over in the cell phone universe on, a, on an international scale? They're going to you got six billion people on the earth. Cell phone universe is very large. There'll be a, a leaping of that. And the access idea is spreading in Europe and it's spreading all over the world. So the communication, it's a large thing that's going on. And we should be sure that this entities that represent that are well run and well understanding they're realizing their potentiality don't you think we have to check ourselves to make sure we're in good sync with the ultimate expression of uh, this purpose and universe and yeah, so forth? Yeah, I think uh, there has to be. Do you think we be... adequately um, monitor ourselves in terms of mission statements and things of that sort of thing? I think in New York City we do. Uh, I okay. think in New York City the access centers are really healthy and vibrant and, mm. and uh, as some say, mature. Mm -hmm. You know, they're uh, uh, incredible people uh, staffing the organizations, incredible producers mm -hmm. here, and clearly they're making progress and, and growing and developing. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, these are public institutions. Right. Uh, there has to be a high level of transparency. There a high, is a high level, a high of, level of transparency. High level yeah. of accountability. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, to whom instance, are we responsible here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network? to the community, to the to neighborhoods the, no, that we... The no, but I mean in a political sense. To, to who are uh, watching uh, our chicken coop? Well, we have... Um, uh, you saw those statistics I showed yeah. earlier on the graphs. You know, mm -hmm. we have to measure what we do. Mm -hmm. And we have, and we to, have show to present that to what oversight committee of where and who's watching uh, our operation as it would. The marketplace watches it in the marketplace. You've got yeah. a market discipline, that sort of thing. That's there politically and so forth. But in terms of a public policy thing, how are uh, the public access systems monitored in terms of their effectively realizing uh, both legitimacy and uh, the legitimacy of what they're doing and no hanky-panky and that kind of thing? Or is it important? No, it's very important. There's a number of different uh, local government institutions that we're accountable to that uh, uh, City check Council? us out. City Council, uh -huh. Do It, mm -hmm. uh, the Borough President, mm -hmm. uh, the Attorney General of uh -huh. New York State. So we have to That's present. That's a lot of heavy duty. Yeah, we have to monitoring. Yeah, yeah, we have to. There's heavy duty. We have to present reports to the Attorney General, right. to the Office of Charities Bureaus. That's each of the public access facilities yes. must do this, and yeah. it's built into the system. Yeah. So that the public, it would be good for the public to know that this is not just a bunch of renegades going off taking advantage of something for their own advantage, but that it's serving public policy. Yeah. And that should be built into the mission statement. We have an alliance that represents these entities, yeah. and it'd be good to keep that clear that there is a, there's a careful setting up in terms of ethics and in terms of the standards by which these systems are going to operate in the public interest is being watched and being, uh, you know, safeguarded yes. rather than, because there are some instances in any situation where somebody mafia-like will take over and run it for their own interests and that kind of thing. It's inherent in the human system, but in particularly we want to keep it really clean in terms of this public access if we want to gain widespread public support for the institution. Absolutely. You got okay. it very, you know, very clean, very <laughs> transparent. 
treat nickels like manhole covers, as, <laughs> as we say. Uh, but uh, one of the uh, accountability moments yeah. is something that happens uh, right now with the cable companies. Yes. For instance, the cable companies are very concerned that uh, their money is uh, what they consider their money that they provide us right. is being well spent and is fully accounted Fair for. Enough, right? So we actually present to them the uh -huh. same community needs assessment, our same figures, our same audited books uh, uh -huh. uh, go to the to the uh, the cable companies as well. And in fact, ten years ago, uh -huh. uh, it's my understanding at the the franchise time ten years ago that yeah. there was uh, uh, even an auditor from cable companies that come in and take a look at us. So. All of this is... Uh, and it, it, it could be open to the press. It could be open to the business press. It could be open to the press to monitor what's going on. Yeah, and I think there's... transparency yeah, is there's what I'm saying. is a good thing, by and large, particularly if you're on a straight track. You, you, you would welcome transparency. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? And I think that's important because it's got a, a huge public... Relay, it's got a huge responsibility to the public for this liaison between the public and the communication, which is becoming more and more important, even in the realm of shaping ideas. It's like a university, the internet mm -hmm. and the communication, multimedia, it's got a huge educational, and then also even policy, uh, informing policy decision making that is quasi-political and so forth, but it's not. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. It's very, very important to be that the ethical standards be vouchsafed. Yeah, so. absolutely. And, okay. and this is why it's, I think, uh, it's critical these public hearings that are happening. Yeah. Folks got to come down to those uh, and and see this uh, process in motion. This is part of the transparency. This is a part of the accountability. Yeah. Very important. We're going to uh, put it right out on the air live. I yeah. Think. Yeah. We're going to. It can't that's be right. more, much more transparent <laughs> than that. You know. But, that's right. But yeah. especially, yeah. I think, you know, uh, uh, we have got to hold uh, a, a whole broad range of actors accountable, and especially those. Uh, who uh, are benefiting so tremendously from the use of the public land uh -huh. uh, and specifically the cable companies, uh -huh. uh, the city of New York, uh -huh. uh, and how this uh, land is, is managed. So uh -huh. it's very important that folks come down on Thursday, uh -huh. uh, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m., Borough of Manhattan Community College, and, and to see directly in action uh, and if you can't make it, turn on channel uh, 57, I think we're on, You're going to have 57. Uh, uh, on Thursday, yeah. Yeah, and there's going to be expansions of that. Public access is an extremely important uh, evolution in the evolution of communications capability, and it's the leading edge. I think the ideas are going to appear there before they'll appear in the established uh, broadcast media and so forth. It's really important. And I'm really happy here at Manhattan Neighborhood Network to have such a capable fellow at the helm as our executive director, and that's Dan Coughlin. Thank you very much for coming and sharing all this with us. And the producers will be in touch with you in terms of uh, the relationship with the producers and so forth. They, they want to have a hand in all of this. So it's your pleasure to have had his perceptions. Welcome very much to that. Do, by all means, come to the Manhattan College on the 7th, two days after today. Right. We've already decided. I wonder, have we decided by now who our Democratic candidate is going to be uh, for president? This I being the fifth. I don't this think it's, the, uh, this is being it's, Super it's Tuesday been announced morning. quite yet. This is Super Tuesday morning, so everybody tune in tonight to your television to see the results of Super Tuesday. We're just thinking ahead anticipatorily, as Mr. Fuller uh, do you want to uh, Do you want to prophesy? I don't Harold, know. Or? I don't know. I think it might become Mr. Obama, but I don't know. But I don't want to say, but, uh, <laughs> you know, it's just there's something blowing we in will the wind. Test, test your, we will uh, test your, your prophecy next week. You don't want to take it up with Nick the Greek. But thank you for viewing. Uh, we'll be coming back again tomorrow. Thanks again for le leading such a well-led life, Dan Coughlin. Thank you for leading this uh, entity here so well and uh, a lot of work ahead and look forward to it all. Thanks a lot, Harold. Okay, so everybody go to Manhattan College and it's for public transport, it's the one, two, and three train, the A and the C will take you right to the corner yep. almost, little walk west, and then you yep. can take the number 20 bus down beautiful 7th Avenue through Midtown Manhattan. BMCC to 199 Chamber Street. There you go. So. That's the exact thing. You can look it up on, uh, you can look it up on, isn't it amazing the technology that's it's coming in? Mean, it's incredible. an amazing time to be alive and participant. Right? It is, it is. It is an amazing thanks time. A, thanks a lot.